Hey people, it's Nayas Toki. I would like to thank Pro Black Ford Free and Moyo Africa for posting about this. So this source I'm using, and this is for future reference because I can't post the links in the description. This is theguardian.com, so just web search, you know, British Museum and VA to lend Ghana looted gold and silver. So that's what it says. British Museum and VNA to lend Ghana lo looted gold and silver. Objects to go on show at the Mania Palace Museum in Kumasi as part of Asante King's Silver Jubilee celebrations. Gold and silver treasure located from West Africa by the British Army in colonial wars are to be lent to Ghana in a three-year deal the British Museum and the Victoria and Albert Museum have announced. The precious regalia which had belonged to the Asante Royal Court is regarded as part of the national soul of Ghana. Under the deal, 17 objects from the VNA and 15 from the British Museum will go on show later this year at the Mania Palace Museum in Kumasi, the capital of Asante region. Many of the items have not been seen in Ghana for 150 years. News of the deal came as Greece renewed its calls for the Parthenon marbles to be returned to Athens. Most of the objects involved in the Ghana deal with Otomfue Ose Tutu II, the current Asante king, looted from Kumase during Anglo-Asante wars in the 19th century. Some form part of an indemnity payment forcibly extracted from the Asantini king at the same at the time, but they also include a gold loop harp that was presented to the British diplomat Thomas Bowditch during a trade treaty in 1817. Nana Oforiato, I am a special advisor to Ghana's cultural minister, welcomed the deal as a good starting point in righting the wrongs of the UK's violent colonial past. Speaking to the BBC, which first reported the deal, she said they're not just objects, they have spiritual importance as well. They're part of the soul of the nation. It's pieces of ourselves returning. I am described the deal as some kind of healing and commemoration for the violence that has happened. Tristram Hunt, director of the VNA, said the items were the equivalent of our crown jewels. Even those jewels were stolen from other countries. Don't let him try and gaslight you. He said 150 years after the attack on Kumasi and the looting of court regalia, the VNA is proud to be partnering with the Mania Palace Museum to display, to display the important collection of Asante gold work as part of our commitment to sharing collections of a colonial past. We are excited to see these items on public show in Ghana as part of Asanteheni or Tonfu or Se Tutu Second Silver Jubilee celebrations. Major museums in the UK, including the British Museum and VNA, are prevented by legislation from permanently handling back contested treasures in their collections. And I want to point this out right now. This whole thing, legislation, bro, laws in this country, the UK, can be changed on a whim. It's not like the United States Constitution, you know, where you need all sorts of backing by the governors, the states, and both houses, and the president. No, no. They change laws all the time. I remember years back, they changed the law saying that uh, there, there would be elections f every five years. And, the, and then nowadays, the prime minister is saying, oh, we're going to pick and choose when the election. I was like, wait, what? I thought that th that was it. There was no more p picking and choosing when the election is going. Five years Every is so or two every ten years. No, nope. apparently they fixed that or they changed it. But all the laws mean absolutely nothing when they want to change it. Don't let them gaslight you. The the legislation stops us. If they really wanted to, they could change it in an instant. These include the Parthenon sculptures, which Greece has long campaigned to return to Athens. The Benin bronzes, which are the subject of a similar demand by Nigeria, and the Asante gold. And they said the three-year deal with the king, which could be extended, was not restitution by the back door. He added, we have a responsibility to the countries of origin to think about how we can share those more fairly today. It doesn't seem to me that all of our museums will fall down if we build up these kind of partnerships and exchanges. Yes, they would fall down. Everything inside these museums is stolen from somebody. On Thursday, Greece's Prime Minister Kyriakos Mitsotakis repeated calls for return of the Parthenon marbles after a diplomatic spat with the UK government last year. In his first public statement on the issue since November, Mitsotakis said Greece had been in talks with George Osborne, chair of the British Museum, about a deal to bring them to the Acropolis Museum. He said, let me be clear, we will insist on their reunification for many reasons, but one in my mind is the most important. Only by being seen together in situ in the shadow of the Acropolis can we truly appreciate their immense cultural importance. Now, I want to say this. This is absolutely ridiculous. 
that this museum is loaning items back to the countries they stole them from. And I want this, I want, really wanted to bring this story to the forefront because people love to gaslight this whole reparations argument. It was a long time ago. This is 150 years ago. And British museums, American museums, and other uh, European museums have stolen African artifacts on display. And they're, this is all there. So, you know what I mean? And this is not a long time ago. They have these objects in uh, their vaults. And there's probably way more that they have s uh, stored away that we don't know about, you know. Stuff that may not be as valuable as the actual gold, but has pr a lot of historic and cultural significance. Anyway, I was going to say. And you know something? I think we need more strong African leaders. I remember reading about Sani Abacha, the uh, military leader of Nigeria, and when Britain criticized him, he stopped all British flights to the... Nigeria, and they had to cave in and give some concessions. I don't know what it was about without researching it. But he was willing to stand up to them and show them he didn't care. And you know, all this talk about Nigerian scammers, I don't understand why this mentality can't be employed in some effective way. Like, why can't they just get them back on loan and have them the museum be mysteriously robbed? And after, I don't know, a few decades of them being mysteriously stored away, they'll put them back and say, well, it's been a while since we've taken them, uh, since they were on loan and we've grown so used to them that it's now ours again. I mean, that's what white people do with black people's stuff. They just steal it and have it for so long. They say, well, you know, we've had it for so long. It, it really, it should stay with us. Why can't that be done? Just... Spot it, you see, disappear it. Anyway, this is absolutely despicable. And as I said, I can't leave the description in the link. But as I said, if you just look, web search it, is this source is theguardian.com, British Museum in VNA to lend Ghana looted gold and silver. So please comment, rate, share, subscribe. Peace.